Ayn Rand was a Russian-American novelist of the mid to late 20th century who developed a philosophy, objectivism, and wrote many best-selling novels in order to promote laissez-faire capitalism and limited government. Having escaped communist Russia, she moved to America, where she launched her career as a novelist and American intellectual. Her philosophical and literary innovations, coupled with her first-hand knowledge of the terrors that she experienced in Russia, had and continue to have a large impact on American society and politics. From the time of Rand's birth in 1905 and before, American government had been undergoing a major shift in political ideology. The progressive era had set in, and American government was expanding in power. Her birthplace, Russia, had also undergone many political changes, including the Bolshevik Revolution. Through the tumultuous events of the Russian Revolution, Ayn and her family faced the seizure of her father's business, famine, and poverty. After having finished her degree in screenwriting at Petrograd State University, her parents having been able to scrape up just enough money, she left Russia and sought refuge with distant relatives in the year of 1926. In America, after a chance encounter with Cecil B. DeMille himself, she took a job as a set extra and finally a screenwriter. There, she met Frank O'Connor, and to avoid deportation, they married in 1929, the year of the stock market crash. In America, though, Ayn Rand saw hints of the system she had wanted to escape, made evident to her in the various forms of government intervention contained in Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal, the growing amounts of government intervention outside that sphere, the popularity of communist philosophy in American intellectual circles, and America's abandonment of its isolationist foreign policy. To her, these and other events were similar to what she had seen in Russia, though less pronounced. Rand's disdain with those occurrences inspired her to a career as a writer and political activist. In 1936, she published We the Living, a novel about the struggle of young Russians under communist rule. In it, she synthesized her love of individualism with the larger political problems of Russia. Though it was not as popular as she had wished, it received good reviews from critics, especially H. L. Mencken, a popular libertarian critic, who heralded it as the Uncle Tom's Cabin of Soviet Russia. In 1938, she published Anthem, a piece of fiction which was set in the future, in a socialist nation. Like We the Living, it concerned the oppression of individualism at the hands of government. And though it was not well received in America, it became quite popular in Great Britain. In 1943, she published what is regarded today as one of her greatest works, The Fountainhead. It became a bestseller by word of mouth, and publishers rushed to meet demand. Then, in 1957, she published what she considered her greatest work of fiction, Atlas Shrugged, a novel which combined her ideas of the role of government and the ideal human being into a plot involving a nation in economic panic. In it, the creative minds of the world strike, refusing to be used for what Rand referred to as altruistic purposes. It also became a bestseller, and in it, it framed Rand's new philosophy, which she called objectivism. Ayn Rand's philosophy was unique and innovative because it challenged the popular values of selflessness and charity, especially with respect to government policy. When asked one day to explain the basic corollaries of objectivism while standing on one foot, Rand responded by outlining its main ideas in philosophical terms. She described its metaphysics as objective reality, saying that to be commanded, nature must be obeyed. Epistemology consisted of the idea of reason as a means of perception, then explaining that wishing something will not make it true. Her ethics were the ethics of self-interest, and she explained this by saying that humans must be looked upon as ends in themselves. Her ideal political system was capitalism, and to explain this, she quoted Patrick Henry's famous statement, Give me liberty or give me death. 
She went on to clarify her political ideas by specifying the ideal capitalistic system to be laissez-faire capitalism, saying it was a just system because it allowed people to deal with each other as traders and to initiate trade voluntarily. It did not allow the initiation of physical force against others. She explained further that under a laissez-faire capitalistic system, government would assume its proper purpose, the purpose of acting as a policeman, a defender of rights. Like the separation of church and state, she believed in a separation of economics and state. Ayn Rand's philosophical and literary innovations created a mixed reaction, becoming widely popular or extremely disliked among many Americans. William F. Buckley and Whitaker Chambers, two staunch conservatives, denounced her books for their atheism. Prominent libertarians, such as Murray Rothbard, Robert Laferve, and Isabel Patterson, praised her work. She attracted the attention of businesses and many colleges, such as Yale, Berkeley, and Brown, who invited her to speak for their audiences. Her books attracted a large amount of followers, among them Nathaniel Brandon, who would become a famous psychologist, and Alan Greenspan, the future Federal Reserve Chairman. Rand's views eventually became so popular that she began to publish a newsletter called The Objectivist Letter. She began a radio program on Columbia University's campus called Ayn Rand on Campus. She also made numerous media appearances, including an appearance on The Phil Donahue Show. Well, there isn't such a thing as a soul or a mind. There's only your body. It's materialism. They believe that you're not a man, but a collection of atoms. And give that body to the state for the collective effort of the... That's right. For the good of the whole and sacrifice to the state. And whoever says it is or wants to be the state. To begin with, I don't believe that society has any responsibility towards anyone. N neither the future leaders nor the future victims. Society has nothing to do, properly speaking, with the life of any one person except to keep out of his way and give him a chance. Individuals have a responsibility to themselves. Is that it? I don't like the word responsibility involved here. All right. Well, what should uh, we say then? Help me. What do, do I... Uh, do what I wish to do. Is that your point? That the more... No. Do what I rationally think is right according to the right morality. Uh, and help others if you can but not as a primary obligation and now in regard to society there is no such thing as society you know it's all of us now how can we have obligations which we didn't undertake see the parents of a child would have obligations for him up to a certain age since they brought brought him into the world but they can't do what is impossible to them. So it doesn't mean that, that they can at any moment s throw the burden on the rest of us. We're society, everybody's society, and we can't have unearned obligations and unchosen obligations. After a battle with lung cancer, Ayn Rand died on March 6th, 1982. Her ideas, though, have lived beyond. Her books and philosophy helped to spark the Libertarian Movement and the Libertarian Party. One of Ayn's followers, Nathaniel Brandon, went on to become a key figure in the self-esteem movement of psychology, which was also devoted to individualism. Alan Greenspan, a devoted objectivist and Federal Reserve Chairman, acted upon her ideas in the form of a commitment to low interest rates. Through the Ayn Rand Institute and her intellectual heir, Leonard Peikoff, Rand's ideas continue to gain popularity today, with sales of Atlas Shrugged rising in response to the current financial crisis. Through her innovations, Ayn Rand made a huge impact on American society and changed the way people thought about morality and the role of government.